And here we go. So hi everyone, welcome for the th uh, 30th um, global community call for the Open COVID-19 Initiative by Jogo. We're extremely, extremely excited uh, and happy to uh, have you all here. Uh, this is going to be a special one. It's going to, this is going to be a big one uh, because we're going to announce the winners uh, of the round five of the Jogo Micro Grants. And this, is, as, this has been our biggest round of micro grants so far um, with more than 40 projects applied, 42 exactly. And, uh, and we, uh, we have also amazing, amazing uh, evaluations, uh, you will see. So um, this is going to be uh, an exciting uh, um, group uh, of projects. Um, and um, so the, before we get into this, uh, we have uh, uh, another announcement to make. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, all right. This is one that is going to be exciting for you too, especially biologists out there. All right. And um, so the usual, if you want to know more about open COVID-19. Uh, and it's the launch of a new program uh, on Drogo. And um, it's a bit different from what you have experienced with open COVID-19 because it's not, um, it's not a program where we invite external project, original ideas to come around. This one is a bit different. It's to help Doctors Without Borders. Uh, as you know, Doctors Without Borders, he is mostly working on low and middle uh, income countries. Uh, and right now they, have, they are trying to face one of the biggest issues in the world, which is antimicrobial resistance. And, uh, and you know, what, what we expect is by 2050, antimicrobial resistance is to cause 10 million deaths per year. And so um, in order to, uh, to be able to analyze more clinical samples where on the field, uh, they cannot just actually recruit more microbiologists, more clinical microbiologists. That's, that, that just doesn't work, it doesn't scale. So they have developed instead um, an app that works on smartphones that can do the antibiogram, uh, the procedure to analyze the microbial resistance of microbes, um, uh, to analyze the data, uh, using a machine learning algorithm. And so this, this app and its machine learning algorithm is open source, and so, uh, but it's not ready yet. They need a lot of data to be able to train that algorithm. And so uh, we decided to partner uh, with them and they decided to partner with us so that we can work um, on this together with you, this the Juggle community, that we can help them produce enough data um, and so the, the program page is going to come um, on publicly uh, tonight. So we will be able actually to, uh, to go there and, and, and look at it. But basically, uh, we will ask a microbiologist to have access to- um, Okay, thank you. <laughs> please, please mute yourself if you're not. And, Full stop. Uh, and- um, But if you are just what? looking for the pellets names- That's make sure that it would be then why do you need the bacteria all right you go on the all right <laughs> sorry for that um let me share my screen again there we go my fault for not thinking of meeting uh, people by default before all right is this going to work again yes so um, the, what will be, um, you know, what the, what the participants will be asked to do is to perform a simple microbiology experiment where they will use a petri dish where they will plate a genotype bacteria. It could be um, Escherichia coli, uh, you know, E. coli, the one that you use in normal bi microbiology laboratory, that's fine. As long as it's not a patho pathological bacteria because we don't want you, know, you to take any risk with that. Uh, and so you will be plating the bacteria uh, on the plate where you will have disc that contains different kinds of antibiotics, as we can see on the pictures on the left here. And uh, if there is no resistance, the antibiotic, the antibiotic is going to kill the bacteria. So you're going to have 
this kind of round of disk, you know, round uh, where the bacteria disappear. And so then you will be taking a picture of this uh, plate and the algorithm is going to analyze it and give you the resource for you. Um, and so it's very simple, but we need like thousands of pictures, thousands of plates if you want. Um, and so uh, we'll be asking people who are in the capacity of doing these simple experiments in the right laboratory environment, the right safety laboratory environment. Um, if they'd like to participate, um, the Doctors Without Borders Foundation is going to reimburse all the, the cost of, um, of uh, materials, you know, for, for the plates, for the antibiotics, etc. And um, so all the details are going to appear on the program page by tonight. And uh, so I expect people who are microbiologists in there, who are part of, you know, community laboratories to take part in it. This is going to be a great chance to collaborate with Doctors Without Borders, and we are very much looking forward to it. Um, all right, we, I won't be taking any questions right now. There will be other occasions later, but just wanted to make the, the announcement now. Um, now, on to the bigger part. <laughs> so we're going to shift uh, presentation. Uh, sorry, there is a lot of flies here. Um, <laughs> so let me stop sharing my screen and go to um, the next slide deck. All right, here we go. Uh, up. Is it working? Yes, it's working. All right, open COVID-19 macro grants round five. <laughs> so as, as a summary, we have decided to allocate 40,000 euros to 18 projects that are coming from 10 different countries. So I told you this is our biggest round so far. You know, it's, it's uh, at least twice as big as the previous ones. So, uh, and, and you know, it's, it's this way also because the quality of the project were ex excellent. So we really followed the evaluation that you guys have made of the different project and we apply the same kind of cutoff that we always did before. Um, what this is where the projects are coming from, you know, and uh, we can see it's, it's fairly actually well distributed. Uh, we have a big trunk from North America but, and from Europe too, but we do have you know, projects coming from Africa, from Oceania, from South America and from Asia. So we're really happy actually to have projects coming from all continents, which is crazy when you think about it. Um, so just one giant lab, here we go. Um, <laughs> the, so now we're going to get into more details about how the, the scores, you know, the evaluation were used to calculate the scores and then to decide what are the projects that are, you know, worth to receive the drug on micro grants. And again, um, we, we are just applying the same kind um, of analysis that we did before, uh, just making sure, so we're going to explain you how we detected potential, potential fraud, uh, you know, treachery, if you will, um, and also, how we have um, not only rated, you know, impact and feasibility, but also leanness. Uh, and that's very important. As you will see, we have actually added the bonus uh, in the score for projects that we're not asking the maximum amount uh, of, of money. And because as we said, you know, uh, if you ask less, then your, your project is going to have a higher likelihood to, uh, to get funded. Uh, so we really wanted actually this to be represented also in the scores. Um, all right, so to make this happen, I'm going to call Chris, who has been doing the analysis so that you can get hey. more the details. All right, Chris. Okay, um, so uh, Tom has the one sharing the screen, but I'll talk about what's happening. So yeah. um, here we have kind of the overall impression from uh, reviewers in various aspects of the project. So on the left hand side of the screen, uh, are all projects as a summary and it, these are two um, pieces of information, the impact uh, made up from the first half of the review form that you guys used, and then the feasibility from the second half. Uh, and effectively, uh, we take these two parameters in addition with section eight, which is those projects which have already applied. So if you've already applied, you have to be even higher quality and you need to have already demonstrated some impact and that you've uh, made some progress. And this is sort of a summary of 
what all the reviews thought in about every single project. So this is every single review. Um, and we can see that on average, um, people tend to do just over 3.5 on impact and then slightly lower on feasibility. And then there's uh, projects above and below that line. And you can use that to um, differentiate between projects. And then on the right hand side, you can see these are what um, reviewers um, marked their project they were reviewing to be. So medical hardware, data analysis, apps. It's kind of funny actually, because apps, uh, the way that the, um, the, the word, cloud word, uh, word cloud works, it adds three Ps, so that's, um, protective equipment, diagnostics, self-screening, uh, genetic engineering, lots of really cool stuff. Um, research, uh, you can just sort of pick the words up yourselves. Um, then I've got the next slide. And then this is sort of a, a summary of the, the reviewers. Now there were 222 reviews. Uh, so everyone actually did well above the amount of views that were required. And then we had that bug problem um, halfway through and thank you everyone for really working hard to sort that out and make sure that everyone was reviewed yeah. fairly. Yeah, I, I want to stress that part. Like this is not possible without you taking part in the review process. So thank you. Like this open peer reviewing process can exist because you are you know, willing to take part in it. And we are just showing that it actually works. So that's great. Thank you again. Um, so and at the moment, everything will be quantitative, uh, but um, you'll get a following email, which will include all the, um, the written uh, reports from reviewers on your projects as well. Um, and you can see reviewers, we also asked them, what would you assess yourself to be um, expertise-wise in relation to this project? And you can see that most people view themselves to be four, which is quite nice, and four on the five ends. So when they were viewing projects, they were moderately confident that they could review this project quite well. So that's quite reassuring. No one that's not on the one to three side. Uh, and then you can see there's such a huge diversity of people that are um, that are marking these projects. So if you do like a word cloud of, um, I mean, you'll you'll see what um, what your reviewers do is when they also when you get your reviews. But it, as just sort of a general summary of uh, the kind of reviewers we got, um, this, these are the kind of reviewers. We've got project managers, uh, people with pandemic um, experience, development engineer, product design, etc. Uh, lots of researchers as well and trained physicians. Um, okay, next slide. And then, uh, so as part of um, the review process, um, it's in this massive big data sheet. And um, on that data sheet, uh, we look for uh, reviewers that review strangely or review only one project, for example. So um, we do that for various means. So one of them is finding like outliers on like a PCA. So if there's someone who's answered all the questions very strangely compared to others, it, this could be because they're doing it maliciously. Um, and we see here there's two groups of reviewers. So there's one that's going one way and one that's going the other. That's actually just, so these one, these dots here you see, they're um, reviews of um, projects that have applied before. And then on the flat, on the reverse axis, on the, the other direction, it's all the other projects effectively. And then we've got a, a, bit, got a big heat map. And what's quite nice to see is you can see there's a diversity of question answering. So we don't just get people answering five or four for so everything. There's actually a, like a variety of responses that you can see from the, um, the coloring that we see. So um, there's no giant straight lines, et cetera, which is kind of nice. And um, through this analysis, we identified, unfortunately, there was one team who, so a typical reviewer, um, we found reviewed at least three projects. And sometimes um, they, it could have been that a team used multiple people to um, review projects, but they acted normally. Um, but we had one team, uh, the multi para -L vision, um, who may have completely innocently asked other people that they knew to review their project. And it ended up creating seven separate accounts that just reviewed this one project, which is very strange. So we identified that as a cheating team when it would be unfair. So we removed that from the, from the system. Um, yep. And the next slide. Wait. Let me. Uh... Cool. All right. Sorry. 
Yeah, you can you can go ahead, uh, Chris. Um, I had to mute myself. Um, and then these are the review rankings. So we've just taken average and, feasibility. And the results. <laughs> yeah, and the results. Yeah, so if you're above 3.5 uh, on this table, so if you're not grayed out, then you've been successful. And congratulations. If you have been grayed out, well, I'll tell you. Come on, come on, projects were more like, Congratulations for the people <laughs> who have been over 3.5 in review score, every score. So. Uh, you can see the, all the rankings here, and um, and again, like we, we we are going through the the whole explanation to uh, to for you to understand, um, you know how you got that score, how it was calculated, how it was you know potentially a bit modified, you know uh, as, as I was explaining before. Um, so let's here you go, Chris. Uh, and all the other projects, I should say, um, every single project that I saw, um, all the project proposals were. Absolutely incredible. The standard has increased, I think, just because of the number of projects that have applied this round. Um, yeah, congratulations to everyone who applied and um, those who did get it. Uh, further congratulations. Um, we'd love to keep on helping you after this uh, grant round as well. Um, and then we'll we'll send you further further emails and I'll talk about it further. Uh, yeah, then all, 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 all winners should have received an email from us already and. Uh... And so there, is, there are some uh, instructions for you to follow. Um, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll come back to those instructions, but basically uh, it's, uh, it's that in two weeks from now, um, so first there will be some papers for you to sign uh, to make sure that everything is okay. And also uh, in two weeks from now, we'll have a new global community call where um, we will have all the winning projects present a three minute um, show. And I mean like a presentation. Um, if you cannot make it, uh, you will have to record uh, a small video that we can we can showcase, uh, you know, that we can display in your name. Um, but we'll come back to this later. Yep. Okay. And then the, the okay. next slide. We, we, we'll we'll send this all to you and have it in a PDF so you can all view all times in this course. Uh, after this, now it's public. We can add this to the Google slides. Um, and also um, because because um, we. Uh, Jogal is focused on uh, research and development, um, and as it, as these aren't technically new projects, as it says in the project um, application form, uh, we removed um, the manufacturing projects. So although uh, the Maker Lab uh, recycled visors was extremely cool, the Made, made in Africa face shield was also incredible, um, and you can see this um, hat worn by this little girl was 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 very nice as well um, because. The, Face yields already exist and they're mass produced. Um, we, we can't help with those, but um, we'd be happy to try and help you um, with those projects anyway. Um, but not, no funding this time. Yeah, that's, this has been a rule since the very first um, micro grant rounds uh, that tech we, we can't fund all possible projects. It's not our role to fund manufacturing uh, that we really focus on. Um, you know, um, prototyping, uh, explore, explorative, explorative ideas, uh, and, uh, and science and innovation in general. Um, all right. Um, oh yeah, and so because there was so many incredible projects and we have a limited budget, uh, we, we sort of applied an, an efficiency um, adjustment to allow all projects that were um, reviewed very well by the community to receive funding. Uh, so, um, Basically, if you had an efficiency score of higher than 3.5 and you get 80% of the funding before 90% and 4.5, 100% the funding, and that's decided by um, effectively your average review score, as you just saw before on the table, and then um, an adjustment based on whether you asked for the full amount of funding or not. So if you asked for far less than the full amount of funding, but got a slightly lower average score, then your score would be boosted and you'd get um, within a slightly higher bracket, for example. I think this only actually happened for one project, but um, yeah. it, it did effectively um, reduce all uh, funding from projects and allow all funding, all projects, sorry, more projects were able to receive funding because all projects took a small hit from their funding. Yeah. Uh, but those that were very, very good kept, managed to keep all of their funding. Yeah, nice. so it's, yeah. Th this, this is something that, um, so, uh, as we said, so we, we, we had uh, to cap the, the amount of budget we could uh, use for this, um, 
for this uh, for this round. But that the whole idea is to uh, to um, you know make sure that um, we we uh, we you know we award um, you know impact the feasibility uh, you know as best as possible. So people projects who are you know very high in terms of scores. Um, you know, they are, they, are, they are fully like entirely funded for the amount of funding they have, they have asked. And then as your, your score is getting lower and lower, then um, it means that some of the funding that is allocated, the part of funding that you have asked is a little bit reduced. Uh, and so it's really to favor, you know, higher quality projects. Um, and then, however, um, there is a way for you to, um, to, to reverse that trend potentially is by becoming leaner. Uh, and so if you ask less than the maximum amount of funding uh, allowed, then you can get a, a bonus. And so uh, um, actually it has had one of the projects to get, you know, from, uh, from the 80% to the 90% uh, threshold, for example. Um, yeah, and so it's a, it's, it's, it's a nice way to, uh, to, uh, to, for us to, to be able to, um, to, uh, what to promote these kind of characters and projects, and also to make sure that at the end we can fund also as many projects as possible. Um, and um, so yeah, so here, here you go. Um, and uh, I guess we we also try to uh, to make this uh, rule more more understandable because you know those uh, equations are not necessarily super clear. So we'll send you and we share more information about that later on. Um, all right. And so uh, again, who, here are the successful applicants. Uh, so congratulations to them again. Uh, and you can see the allocated funding also on uh, on the right. Um, and again, it, it, you, know, you, you can look at the average score. Uh, you can look at um, the the score group that was applied. Uh, and uh, and so. Um, all, all the, the personal data regarding your project are going to be sent to you through email, so uh, don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, um, I think that uh, Chris, you wanted to, uh, to highlight some, uh, some of the projects. Yeah, so uh, I th so just thought to share some of the projects to um, give, give examples, I suppose. So this is one project, it's called, it's called COVID, uh, COVID Alert. And basically, um, they have reapplied. So before they are actually uh, recipients of general funding before, and it's uh, led by uh, Ali Ali Bektas. Uh, you could be in the call right now. Hey, um, and uh, they did really well in in the review scores. And um, one of the cool, the cool things they've done is they've uh, they've written a paper, and uh, I think they've they've they, they, we'll hear more from them uh, in a couple of weeks' time, but. Um, they were quite cool because basically it's this lamp test for COVID that you can upscale. Um, yeah, and then there's another project which is a new applicant. Um, on the next slide. Yeah. Sorry. And this is by uh, Cindy Cheng and the Corona Net Research Project Group. Uh, they also uh, very uh, academically they've uh, recently wrote a paper, and these are some of the reasons why, why the master's done very well. Um, in the in the review process, and then there's another one which is less academically inclined, but also really new and cool. Uh, on the next slide, um, by I think Ishan, who could be in the call right now, and it's um, him and his high, high school with OPEX are creating the system to detect uh, social distancing in their school, and they did really well as well. Um, so congratulations to to you guys. And then there's a few more slides. Yeah, so the next steps, um, if you're uh, a winning project, um, you'll get a breakdown of all the results. We'll have a PDF, um, what you've seen um, already, but a bit more. Um, the written feedback to all participants from reviewers, so everything you've written um, will be sent by email to all the projects. And also the winners will receive a form for financial information. And then in the global call um, in two weeks time, um, you'll have an opportunity to uh, present your work to a set of guests and um, inform our team for, you know, outreach help. So some of you teams, when I was trying to talk about those projects earlier, um, you'll instead be talking about those projects and we'll be able to uh, spread the word and attract more people and attract um, people to invest in your projects, which would be really cool. Um, so that could be it. Oh, yeah. In summary, 
Um, there's been a set of 42 projects, 322 reviews, um, 18 um, projects have been successful, uh, 40,000 euros. And if you weren't successful this round, it was just due to the incredibly high quality of projects, uh, or in some cases, um, possibly misunderstanding on uh, what, what self-review means in, in, in one case or manufacturing. And of course, um, you will be able to apply again if there's uh, further rounds and then applicants will be sent for their information um, and financial forms. So congratulations, guys. All right, I think we can um, all say that the quality this round was really amazing. And for the project that didn't make it, um, it's, uh, you know, it's okay. Projects in the past that didn't make actually we applied it around and they could actually make it. So um, yeah. you, can, you, can, you can just, you know, uh, look at the reviews that we will be sending you guys to improve your project again and, uh, and apply in a later round. Uh, there is no date for such a round, um, but um, it may come um, sooner than we, we think uh, we'll see. Um, anyway, uh, I really want, I'm going to uh, uh, demute uh, everyone. I know if I can do that, <laughs> but at least uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, Say congratulations to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Congrats. Thanks, yes. And if you didn't get it this time, if you didn't get this time, then uh, I know that at least one of the teams who've won this time is um, accessible genomics. The first mm -hmm. time they were unsuccessful, and uh, the second time and third time. And I think now again, they have been successful. So definitely don't let this on, aren't you? Good luck. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if you have any questions regarding the um, the process, you know, the results, um, don't hesitate to send us an email or contact us on the Slack. We answer to you, obviously, uh, you know, as much as we can. Um, we uh, we really try to be uh, to be um, you know as fair as possible. It's true that um, some of the um, of the filtering where was done by us uh, after that uh, you guys have made the review. And so those are, we are based on what are, is our current understanding of um, what is a good behavior for, um, for, for a project. Um, but I, I, I believe that uh, it's been going well. I've seen that uh, the, the project that we have disqualified uh, has, been, uh, has been making a remark. And so we'll, we'll get into that and, um, and, and we try to identify if, uh, if the claim is true or not. Um, all right. Um, actually, um, do you want to say anything about this news? Like uh, maybe about uh, your project being uh, being funded? You would like to to share your, you know, your your happiness or your excitement uh, before we get into the project uh, the project updates? Who would like to share some uh, some good uh, some good vibes? No. <laughs> 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 We're really glad because now um, for the our corona detectives, the reagents at Swiss prices are so much. All this extra money to Guy is also going to help us get master mix so we can see if we can produce um, corona detective here in Switzerland, um, just the technical side, without having to spend 6,000 francs just for the enzymes, which... Anyway, we're very happy. That's very happy. Everyone, Guy already knows too. He's super happy. Awesome. I think Ishan, do you want to uh, to speak? Oh yeah. Sorry, I, I had a question, but I guess I can just email that question to you guys. Um, I really appreciate it. Honestly, we went to a lot of places asking for funding, and a lot of the places were like, "Oh, you're too young." Um, but we really put a lot of work in over the last six months. So. I really appreciate an institution giving us a chance and we're really excited to use this funding for expanding to a couple more institutions that are interested. That's awesome. Thank you, Ishan. Congrats again. Huh? It's, uh, it's an awesome project. We'd like to share some, uh, some good vibes again. <laughs> I, was, I was so nervous. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it past the threshold, but I am really thrilled because I've been putting a lot of work into uh, planning for the pilot. So this will get me to the next stage. So I'm yeah, so happy. Congrats Thank you. on her. Congrats on her. Yeah, you've been a very active member of this community. And so we're really glad that you made it. <laughs> Thank you.
All right. Well, um, I guess let's go to uh, let's go to the to the next part of this uh, of this session. Um, what are the project would like to share some updates? Let uh, me share the screen again. Yes. All right. I believe Sarah is next. So. Yeah, I, I'm driving, but uh, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so. Um, I just uh, yeah, thank you to Jogal again. Um, you know, uh, my labs are self-funded otherwise, and so it's really great to have support like this. So thanks, Tomas and Jogal a ton. Uh, so what I'll be able to do with the microgrant round five funds is to be bringing up my lab into compliance for the CLIA inspection coming up. And um, so, so yeah, it's great. Um, otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm out of pocket personally for this, so it's really nice. And um, the idea of having the CLIA lab, of course, is to test patients. And so I'm excited. Hopefully that's yeah. Yeah, coming into compliance. We're excited too. Uh, it's, um, so for, for, for if, if you don't know um, the, so uh, Sarah and some others have been working on diagnosis test and uh, in order to get really to, to the point where we were able to, um, to, uh, to make this available to, uh, to industrials or to, uh, you know, to market actually such a such product, they need to be tested in, in clinical uh, validated situations. And so you need some, uh, uh, some specific inspections and rules to follow. And so that can be sometimes costly. So we're very excited that uh, we're able to help and uh, the community think that uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's relevant for, for the future of this project. So, uh, so congrats again, Sarah. And, all Thanks. The and, and always, always wanting to share, you know, whatever experience um, I had. Um, so I put a link to a short PowerPoint presentation that I made for Zeph Landau's group actually last week, but um, just my experience, um, how I got this CLIA number and with a lot of links to resources for anyone who's interested. That's awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'm sure that would be great if you could also share it on the on the project page on Drogo um, directly. Um, okay. All right. Uh, next, we have the Corona Detective with Rachel. Yes. So I hadn't filled out the form again. Actually, yeah, this is all from last time, but the revisions are almost ready to be sent in. The Swiss workshop, my fingers are crossed. I hope um, it's all gonna work out. I think late May, I'll hear about this um, prize to congratulate and encourage new projects from a Swiss network of, um, also it, it includes museums and other sort of public things. Uh, Fran is already at the Korean doing experiments and he and Guy already had some good results with the freeze-dried corona detective tubes that Guy made more than a month ago. So it's really looking good. Um, I think we're gonna have an extra part of our figure for the, this sort of academic paper, which is this Journal of Biomolecular Techniques. Um, and yeah, everything about um, getting our new inactivated virus for controls with corona detective has gone backwards and forwards, but with Tatiana, we hope she'll get okayed by this by resources in America, and then we'll be able to again order this inactivated virus that we ordered like two months ago. But then the guy, the aquarium member who was going to help, he decided he couldn't sign for it because he wasn't going. He was worried that what if the virus isn't really inactivated? What if someone gets sick? And I'm like, it's P1. But anyway, um, it's going to happen. And uh, we're, I already told you what's going on, hoping to get master mix from Paris. Awesome. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rachel. And thanks to Jungle. Thanks to you, Toma. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. You can send the community. <laughs> <your email. laughs> um, do yeah. Then we have uh, Hunter with uh, the basic respirator. Uh, so last week, uh, BARDA, which is the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, they had a contest. They were having a contest for general purpose mask design. So I submitted an application for that mm -hmm. in a video. Um, I should hear back. They said early summer. Um, so they would. Uh, there's going to be a few rounds, but. Um, Hopefully, in the end, it might turn into a licensing agreement um, if everything gets passed, but uh, we'll see. I'll get some, hopefully, some funding as well. Um, but so I've been planning for the pilot. The little screenshot is my roadmap for it. Um, the Ohio Healthcare Association indicated some interest. They have about a thousand assisted living facilities across the state of Ohio. So that would be a really great um, kind of. Uh, it would be easier working with them, I think, than for a hospital, um, especially because a lot of the deaths with healthcare workers um, happened in facilities like that. Um, so uh, looking forward to, to talking with them more. I've um, separated the pilot into two phases. I'm fitting a lot into it. Um, so I appreciate everyone that reviewed my application because I know it was very long and it was kind of a kitchen sink of everything that I wanted to throw in there because there's so much information I wanna find out. Um, but I've separated into two phases, the first phase being primarily interviews um, and collecting data. I want to make sure that my sample size is large enough, so I'm thinking at least 100 fit checks um, and possibly even more interviews um, with surveys and things. Um, and then also lab testing is happening concurrently. Um, and then in the next phase, that will be the act then I'll send out um, actual masks to people and uh, try to have them wear it during an entire shift and simulate all of the activities um, that they would do normally while wearing the mask, just to make sure that, you know, if they need to lift patients or they need to move around, um, it, you know, a lot of physical activity that it's still breathable and comfortable for them and it doesn't slip. Um, and then, uh, then I'll analyze all of that data that I collected during the interview phase, um, try to determine a cost per use, environmental impact, um, and then uh, just analyze the fit um, a lot of this data I'm going to need um, to apply to this incubator um, in Los Angeles, especially the, the environmental impact since it's a clean tech incubator. Um, and then as far as publishing, I mean, I'll certainly publish it on Jogol, but I'm trying to collect the data in a, as formal of a way um, as possible and analyze it uh, that way too. Um, and uh, I'll share it with, you know, obviously that, that'll be made available. So that's, that's it for me. Awesome. Thank you, Hunter. We're looking forward to see uh, the next development phase of your project. Um, all right. Uh, next, we have. Um, is this? Is this? Um, I, I wonder if this is from the last, like two weeks ago from now. Um, do we have um, a new wow mark here? I'm not sure. Um, all right, so I guess let's go to uh, the next project. Um, if someone from the Drogo team can make sure that um, uh, update from, la from two weeks ago are not part of that list, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Um, all right, now we have OPEX and uh, Ishan is here to tell us more about it. Yeah, um, so I guess a bit of an update from last time. I'm not sure if we talked about this last time, but we developed a, a, like a very functional demo of our technology. So we're really excited. There's like a 15 minute video you can watch. It's just my friend, his aunt and their dog walking around their house and you can see how the um, occupancy levels shift. Um, so uh, w with that effective demo, um, we were looking into a few places of expansion. The first is We've been talking with Washington State University for a while about our technology. Um, one of the biggest issues, I guess, was funding um, because funding involves a lot of administration. Um, and they, I think it's a lot to do with our age, but just the amount of time it would take. And then by that time, COVID would kind of not be as much of an issue. So the funding from Jogo will help us to just be like, we can self fund and with a lot of other institutions. Um, some of the other things, um, um, we're working on publishing two papers. Um, 
in collaboration with a few other students because of the data we've collected. So the first is modeling distance versus RSSI. There's been a lot of papers in this area, but I think we have the most up-to-date data in, in terms of this. And then modeling barrier thickness versus RSSI, like talking about how like reflection versus refraction and how um, like the, the, as a physical barrier grows more thick, um, like electromagnetic waves are absorbed and like at what rate that happens. So I think that's, yeah, that's kind of uh, the biggest updates from us. Awesome. Uh, congratulations again on the macro grants. Uh, we're looking forward to see uh, what you can do with it. Very, very excited. Yeah. Um, all right, next we have um, the open source panic ventilator, open vent Bristol. Do we have Darren here? That's me, hi there. Hi. <laughs> um, hi Thomas and, and Chris, thanks very much for your, for your support of this. It's, uh, it's gonna be super useful having, having some funding to help us push forwards, but um, we, haven't, we haven't been, uh, we're, we're fairly new to job or so I'll explain a little bit about the project for context. Uh, we're a ventilator for treating COVID and we're particularly aiming towards uh, developing countries and, the, and the, the, the specific aim and ethos of the project from the beginning has been to uh, design a, a very simple ventilator uh, which can be uh, manufactured rapidly um, so we can start with very short lead times and produce them in a, in a very short space of time because we use only readily available components and manufacturing processes that can be available in most countries in the world. Um, and uh, and our, our device, we've designed it to uh, have the performance suitable to pass US and UK standards, but, uh, but sort of aiming it towards a, a low cost um, and uh, aiming it towards, towards sort of developing countries for use over there. Um, as of, as of this year, we've, we've managed to form uh, partnerships with two groups, one in India and one in Brazil. Uh, and the, 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 the purpose to that collaboration is that we can only take the project so far because it's a medical device. We can't um, sort of legally be the manufacturers of it. But uh, the idea is that we bring it to the point where it's a really good starting point for, uh, for a medical device manufacturer to take on and for them to self-fund and, and push it forwards. Um, so we have one group in India and one in Brazil who, who are quite keen to take our project on once we get it to that stage, which is which is really positive. Um, the the funding that we can get that we're that we can get from from Joggle, we're all really grateful for. So thank you very much for that. Um, but that but that funding is going to help us to buy flow sensors and test lungs, which is going to be really important to test the final prototypes, which we're getting closer and closer to um, to being able to produce. Um, so, so we're, we're, we plan to produce some prototypes, test them, and then send them for external performance testing with, with test lungs, but we really need test lungs here, otherwise we can't, um, we can't test them in-house and fine-tune them and write the code to know if they're going to work before we send them out, and that's, that's what the funding from here is going to be useful for. Thanks very much, uh, both of you. Cheers. Well, congrats again, Darren and the team. Um, awesome project, and uh, and thank the community also for evaluating ev evaluating you. You know, as being um, very impactful, um, and uh, we're looking forward to see more of your developments. Um, next, uh, so we have the the RPPG based multi para monitor by Distant Shah. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, so uh, like uh, it was my project that was uh, disqualified. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't uh, really understand, but uh, we'll we'll yeah, talk about I, that. We'll make sure that we yeah, have a yeah. master this so, uh, Just to explain my project, uh, it is basically uh, the first project that uses uh, camera arrays to identify. Uh, vital stats and parameters so you don't have to use any sensor uh, to like to establish the credibility of uh, my work till now uh, i have been the winner of uh, the international mit hackathon that was uh, uh, like uh, held for india and i also won two national hackathons with this project so uh, I have also done a test, uh, like a complete test in a hospital environment on 25 people, uh, out of which <clears throat> nine people were patients. And uh, 
I uh, they were corona patients and I actually tested my algorithm on those people and it worked very well. Uh, I am constantly in touch with doctors and I uh, myself uh, have a, a medical uh, like medical pro production facility in India. So like if any of the other projects uh, require any help with prototyping or uh, like production in India or something, uh, I will be very happy to help. And uh, we are currently uh, like trying to, so the basic concept is to identify all these parameters, the vital parameters like SpO2, heart rate, heart rate variability, et cetera. And uh, the concept is that all the diseases and all the symptoms, uh, they affect uh, a combination of these vital parameters. So uh, our vision is to identify which disease or which symptom identify uh, affects those uh, which which parameters and train models so that uh, you can just check the vital parameters and like without any doctor uh, like reviewing those parameters, uh, the machine learning algorithm itself will tell you that, okay, so these, these parameters are behaving anomalously. So uh, maybe this person has this kind of diseases or this uh, the probability of this disease is high. So that is what we are aiming. And uh, currently we are like, we have applied for a second round of uh, patient validation. So like uh, previously we had uh, tested our algorithm on 25 people. Now we want to test it on 500 people. So uh, unfortunately, due to the current scenario in India, uh, things are getting delayed. So I am like uh, awaiting the permission for the second round of va validation. Mm -hmm. But like I'll get it soon. So uh, yeah, that's that's all from my side. All right. Thank you so much. Um, um, your, your your name is it Dishant or Shah? Uh, Dishant Shah. Dishan Shah, okay. Um, so thank you so much, Dishan Shah. Um, and uh, so yeah, so, um, I apologize if the way we have an analysis of project uh, is no, not right. I, so we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that afterwards and make sure that yeah. uh, you know yeah. we, you are in the right group. <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right, thank you so much again. Um, let's go to the next project, uh, which is Accessible Genomics with Khalil. Do we have Khalil here? Oh, um, is it is it a different uh, different time zone, of course? Oh yeah. So, but is it is it an update for this time? Um, they haven't messaged me, so it won't be. Sorry again. They, they haven't messaged me, so I think it it will be from a previous. Um, All right. So I one. guess uh, um, I'll go to the next slide, which is bioreactor. I'll just make sure that none of the slides that are not updated for this one are removed, please. And uh, all right, then we have Adrian with the bioreactor. Oh, hi, everybody. So this is a short update for the bioreactor. So last time we said that we sent the two bioreactor kits to Mexico to one of our collaborators. And so this is a, a, an example. If you look at the picture of how, uh, how it uh, kind of works, so we tried it uh, with just with the uh, um, you know uh, E. coli with the RFP uh, red uh, for fluorescent protein there, and as you can see inside that bag in the bioreactor, you can see that uh, reddish orangeish color, which means it worked. Uh, you can see the um, uh, I guess the, the tubes, the uh, uh, the probes, and and stuff like that. Uh, everything is seems to work fine. We did a small sample test, I believe it was 250 milliliters, but that's like uh, actually sufficient for uh, lots of the, the labs, even medium sized labs, if you're talking enzymes and stuff like that. So they were pretty, pretty uh, happy about it. We had several uh, glitches, but uh, we uh, were working to remedy those, uh, not major ones. We lost a little bit of software con connectivity. The, uh, we are running this over the internet um, uh, that lost partially some graphics but uh, uh, and some mechanical problems but uh, the, the run was successful it was about 16 hours run so we are very happy about that thank you yeah very nice thank you so much adrian very exciting um next we have um project lockdown with jean 
Okay, um, we don't have that many um, um, news because of technical issues with uh, our developer team. Uh, essentially, the people who were developing with us right now got, um, they were mostly based in India and you know how things are going over there. And essentially the families got affected. Uh, and so right now it's everything is slowed down. We just have to have a bit of patience for um, being able to, to recover the, um, um, the implementation speed. Now, uh, we did have some very good news 10 days ago. Uh, we got accepted for one tech demo session in RightsCon in June. Uh, so we're going to be presenting the, the platform over there. We've also been looking into um, some other collaborations, including CoronaNet. We are discussing with them, see what are the synergies that we can um, get together. There's just way too many things happening at the same time. We just need to, to talk. And I already had a call with, uh, with Luca, I think about uh, 10 to two weeks ago, more or less, 10 days to two weeks ago. Um, aside from that, uh, as you mentioned here, um, um, my organization, so the IO Foundation, is running a monthly event called Tech Up, where, very long story short, one of the things that we do is we try to pair developers, although we will look into more than just developers, to pair them with open source projects who are looking for extra support. Uh, so anyone in, in Jogo who has a component of software at the moment, uh, we might look into other things in the, in the future, but right now we have to concentrate on software and specifically it has to be software that has a repository on, on GitHub. That's a current limitation that we that we have because of the, the life cycle that we are putting together. Uh, but if any of you guys are interested on in trying to find some extra support, please reach out to me in, in Slack. You're going to find me um, over there quite easily. Um, what we do is we find communities of uh, developers and we invite them to the, um, to the event. The event runs once a month for 48 hours. Uh, and we basically cover three different time zone areas, uh, Asia Pacific, Africa, Europe, and then the Americas. And we also have some capacity building sessions happening during the, during the event. Um, I could post on the, to not take too much time right now, I could post on the, on the Slack, the calendar, so you can see everything that has been laid out until um, December, 2021. So again, if anyone feels like wanting to, to look for some extra support, by all means, reach out, and we essentially put you in touch with these with these communities during the event. What you need to do is decide in and around two to three milestones that you would like to have solved during the weekend, because you have to see it as a as a sprint essentially. Uh, and then you will have to pitch the um, the project, and we try to match you with um, with people. Um, aside from that, I think that's more than enough for now. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jean. Uh, actually, for take up, um, I think that would be a good candidate for uh, having this as a space on Dribble when we release it, um, so that you can we can also uh, you know display uh, the events that you're organizing to the Dribble community. Yeah, definitely. So, and and even if you guys, anyone has any other contact with the other communities that you would like to also invite, by all means, introduce them to, to us. We are providing booths so that the, the platform that we use is called AirMeet. It simulates pretty well a traditional conference um, system. So there's an area for booths. And we basically give a booth per, per team and a booth for community so that everyone can get to know. We are basically trying to concentrate as many um, resources and people. And by the way, we are also bringing in, uh, I forgot to mention this, other organizations that are providing pro bono services to open source and civil society. Uh, so we are putting together from free hosting to um, legal um, advice and, and so forth. So if you even if you come just to the, um, um, to the event, you might be able to find some resources that, that could be useful for, um, for your project. Awesome. Thank you, Jean. That is a dog uh, besides me that agrees to you. <laughs> I hope you've heard it. Um, all right. I did, I did. <laughs> um, nice. So um, next, um, okay. It, it seems. Like I think you haven't uh, refreshed your slides, Thomas. So some of these have been deleted, but it's just okay. uh, still appearing on your screen. Or all right. All right. I think I think that's 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 all for today. Um, awesome. Um, so I guess, um, we can close it here. So before we, uh, we say goodbye, uh, let me stop my sharing.
uh, I would like all of us to you know to uh, just have a round of applause for all the all the winners of this round. You know, you guys have amazing projects. Uh, you really deserve those micro grants. We are all looking forward to see what you're going to be doing with it. Um, also, uh, before we go, let's have a nice group picture where everyone is saying hi, so that you know we can make a screen capture and share this on social media. So if you can activate your video stream and. Uh, we we'll just wait for everyone to activate their video stream and make a screen capture. All right, Lindsay, Isabella, Sophie, Gameli, Jean, Luisa. If you could activate your video stream, that would be awesome. Yeah, okay. If it works on your side. Yes, yes. All right, so let's let's do it. So uh, on three, we can just you can do whatever you want. You can you know say hi, make faces, whatever. <laughs> All right, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, that has been a real blast. And um, so see you in two weeks. Uh, as for the winners, uh, we expect you to make a more formal introductions to your projects. Uh, mm -hmm. If you cannot make it, just recall the three minute videos that we can we can showcase. You know, we want this to be a more formal G and your global community call it's dedicated to, to the winners uh, so that we can share this content also later on on the on social media. All right. Thank you everyone again and talk to you all very soon. Bye bye. Thanks everyone keep safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.